Um, I think it's mathematically plausible to believe that all of us have some talent, some skill that we are magical at. I also think it's mathematically plausible that nine out of ten of us, if we can believe, never find it. And out of the one of the ten who actually find it, I think it's equally mathematically plausible that only one of those ten actually goes ahead and lives and finances their dream. So we're looking at in a room full of management wonks, one out of a hundred people actually living their dream. I want to first talk about not the remaining nine out of ten who find what they are fantastic at but couldn't do it because they couldn't afford to go abroad or they had to save money because uh, her brother was getting married and she had to save money for that or that she didn't get admission or whatever it might be. Let's focus on the remaining 90. That's most of this universe. And let's understand if you don't find what you're fantastic at, magical at, what comes easiest to you, what people are enthralled by, if you don't find that, how do you live closish to that elusive dream? I'm going to call this the one day in the month story, and it's a true story. So there was this friend of mine a few years ago who used to work at Levers. Unilever, Hindustan Lever, what is it now working? Unilever. Unilever. And he was in the product section. And specifically the soap making section. And one day, the engineers came up with a soap that was gentle. So they said, this is our new soap. It has a gentle formulation. So he said, okay. The one day in the month that he really loved was not just spending time how to make this soap gentler or let it have the same amount of cleansing uh, power although it is gentle etc etc but the one day in the month he loved most was when he actually interacted with the marketing section of the company they would come across and say okay what have you got and he said well there's a soap and it's a gentle formulation hmm that's interesting maybe we could uh, pitch this for children or pitch it for regular use he said, look, this is not my business, but could you pitch it to women? Because this is a soap that doesn't dry their skin, and it would be so much gentler on them. They said, yeah, but we were planning to price it low. He said, no, I, I would price it high. He said, oh, that's interesting. Listen, what are you doing at product? Why don't you join us? And he did. So he joined the marketing division of Unilever, he was there. But the one day in the month that he loved most was when he would interact with the client servicing guys from the advertising agency. They would come and say, okay, what have you got? And he said, look, uh, we've got this soap, it has a gentle formulation, and we are planning to position this for the woman. He said, yeah. And price, slightly higher, premium. Good one, that's good. Uh, okay, well, he said, no, no, hang on one second. Uh, look, you guys are the servicing guys. You create strategy. But if you don't mind, I sort of thought that maybe we could position this specifically. Was that a ping? Okay. I thought we could position that specifically for the housewife. He said, really? Why not uh, young girls, supermodels? He said, no, because the housewife, first of all, it, it'll be overreaching. It will be over-promising what this soap has. And the housewife doesn't have time to do the things that other women do have time to do to look after their skin. So maybe we can just position it specifically for the housewife who has very little time. They said, huh, a campaign positioned and targeting the housewife for a gentle soap that's a little more expensive than the other soap she buys for the house. Could do. We'll get back to her. This, what are you doing in marketing? <laughs> Don't you come across and hang with us and strategize with us because you've come up with a pretty good strategy. And he did. So there he was in client servicing and um, strategizing on various brands, various products. And the one day in the month he loved the most was when he would meet with the creative team, the writer and the art director. And so he went there with this particular uh, product and this particular strategy and he said, look, Gentle soap, women, housewife, campaign. We said, oh, okay, 
Cool. And as credit people I want to do, he was summarily dismissed. But he stopped and said, look, you're the creative guys. I, I really don't you know, but I just have a, an idea. I know you're going to laugh at it, but let me just spew it out. They're like, whatever, say it. I said, I have an idea, I don't know why, of a woman in a sari doing the pole vault. They're like, come back here. You're interesting. Clearly you're smoking something that, that we aren't. So tell us. He said, you know, a housewife's day is all about ascending obstacles. And so it's like cooking food, making the tiffin, going shopping, brother and sister-in-law coming over for a, for a month for the holidays. And so I just see this woman having to ascend all these difficulties. And finally, when she gets to the top, she's released and she looks forward to her time as this woman who can enjoy time with this soap and soap. And so she perhaps falls down onto this cushion of this soap. You're like, dude, that's, that's pretty cool. What are you doing in servicing, man? That's crazy. You, and you say you don't even smoke up anything? No, we don't. Okay, well, whatever, get X. He says, well, come, 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 come. And so he did. Last one, I promise you. He was a writer, and then he realized that the one day in the month he loved most was when he would meet with the filmmaking team, the ad filmmakers, the guys who actually make the films. And so he went to the filmmakers and said, look, we have this idea of a housewife, gentle soap, blah, 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 and she's doing the pole vault because she's got all these problems, and then she ascends the problems for the day, and then she has time for herself, and she falls back on this bed of this wonderful soap. I said, okay, cool, got it. He said, look, I, what can I say? I, you guys are going to shoot it the way you want to, but I just have a, a shooting idea, a film idea. He said, really, what? I said, we just see the frame, and the frame is dark, bisected by one white line in the center. I'm like, okay. He said, what we realized later on is this is the top angle of the pole vault pole at 20 meters. And we're seeing just the pole, and we see a blurry figure far away running near this pole. We have no clue what's going on. We don't know it's a pole. And then she begins to ascend. And we say things like washing, dabba, you know, shopping, whatever. And she comes on top and she's screaming. And she's got her pallu tucked in here. And she's screaming and she arches her back over this and lets the pole go. And say, once all that's done, and then she begins to float. And then we see her as we catch her coming down. She's floating in slow motion. She's floating and she's already begun to look forward to the experience. And she falls down into this branded tarpaulin of the soap and then blah, blah, blah. Are you sure you want to be in a, a writer? Why don't you? You have such a visual imagination. Today he's an ad filmmaker. And I don't think it'll stop there. I suspect it will stop at directing movies. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if we don't know what the bullseye is. It doesn't matter if we don't know what we are born to do. What matters is if we consistently intuit to ourselves what aspect of our lives gives us the most pleasure. What aspect of our lives are we uh, fluid? Are we easily best at? Which part of our jobs comes easiest to us? It's like in school, which subject was pleasure? In my case, none, but that's besides the point. Which, which is that one? Which is that aspect of life that people say, you know, he cracks fantastic jokes or whatever it might be. Let's look at that. Let's look at that one day in a month in what we do and expand that to be the next whole month. And within that, look for one day in that month and expand that. We might never get to the bullseye. We might never get to that dream. But we get awfully close to it. And especially today, when we have such mobility and acceptance socially of mobility between jobs, those last sort of barriers, social barriers, a stigma against that are gone. Right, I have 8.13 left. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm going to need your help to do this fast. I promised you I would go look at the 9 out of 10 
after this. So let's do that. Let's say, let's take a really weird profession that somebody finds that he, not even she, he is really good at. And let's take gardening. Let's say one of your friends comes to you and says, dude, I'm born to garden. I, have, I don't have green thumbs. You know, I have green earlobes. It's just coming out of me. I, I touch stuff and it just grows. I have that. And I'd love to do it. I mean, you, you talk to me about soil and seeds and fertilizer and plants and flowers. And you know, I, I, I'm in seventh heaven. But what can I do with it? So let's say he decides to look up the internet and finds that a top course in gardening and landscaping happens in Singapore for how much? 25 lakhs? Good amount? 25 lakhs for 12 months? A really top high class course plus living expenses? 25 lakhs? Yeah? Student loan? 25 lakhs loan from any bank? Don't give me the lowest rate, give me a medium rate. How much will I have to pay and how much time? So, sorry. So, I paid 35 lakhs over how many years? Okay, 7 years, 35 lakhs. How much did I pay a year? 7 lakhs a year. How much is that a month? About 60,000 bucks a month. How much do we need to live comfortably in Bangalore for a month? Really comfortably. A lakh? A lakh is okay? So a lakh 60? We have to earn a lakh 60 as a gardener. We've come back from Singapore. We've come back from Singapore with a, with a, with a degree in landscaping and gardening, which nobody else has clearly in the country. You're really talented, remember, this is your magical bit. You're superb. Anybody can see you're brilliant. How do we earn two lakhs a month? Muscle pace, muscle pace, muscle pace. How do we earn two lakhs a month? Come on. Landscaping. landscaping. Which one? Do it for bigger corporates. Do it for bigger corporates. So, name a corporate. Infosys has a has a uh, has a campus here, or you know, and they say, can I landscape your? Uh, can I landscape this place? Can I landscape it for seas? You go to companies, how much would they give you? Let's say for a month to, to be the head landscaper of the whole crisis. <laughs> Come on. Oh, no, not a lakh. <laughs> 50,000 for a month. I'm saying 50,000. I'm taking worst case scenario because otherwise you'll walk away from here saying that ah, I built a dream that nobody can live. 50,000 rupees a month, stingy, niggardly guys, no problem, 50,000 bucks, I will handle your whole place. How much time will I need to actually oversee the design and landscaping? Implementation is different over the next, uh, over the month uh, at a place like InfoSeas or a place like IIT, IIM Bangalore. Seven, seven days? Seven days a month? Done. I've got 50k for 7 days a month. Let me go to which hotel? Name a hotel. Taj West End. Taj West End. Lots of trees, lots of uh, uh, area. How much would they give me to landscape, re come up with some lovely ideas and implement them over a season? 50k? Too little? Too much? 50k. It's always good to be too little. I, I, I want the lack in 14 days. Do you see the math? You see what can happen? It doesn't mean they have to stay here. It takes two hours to fly to Jaipur and do the Rambar Palace. It takes two hours to fly to Delhi and go out there and look at corporates. With huge, it looks, it takes two hours to go to Delhi and look at a farmhouse where somebody will give you 25k. In 28 days, with three days to party like mad, you're making two lakhs. If you're magical at something, you're gonna have to find ways to make it happen. But there are ways you can do it. There are ways you can do it if only you think. It's not, forget about out of the box. Think within the box. What have I said that's out of the box? But you better have that talent. The good thing in this country is if you have that talent, it, that it really automatically, quickly separates you from anybody else. Because you will find people invariably in that profession who are good and maybe very good, but not, out, not special. We've understood that there are only 10, 10 out of 100 of us who will get there. Who, discover it. If you don't, there is the one day in the month. And if you do, there's always gardening. I'll finish before time. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen.